Hi, it's Katrina. From magical pelicans to cannibalistic insects, here are 10 strange things people used to believe about animals. Number 10. Whales with antenna. We think of whales today as majestic beasts that swim the oceans, but there used to be a lot that was misunderstood about them. The French doctor Pierre Pomé published his Pharmacopoeia, A Complete History of Drugs in 1712. But rather than focusing on medicine, it was full of images of people doing weird things and the strangest animals from around the world. The problem was that the images were wildly inaccurate and depicted features on animals that simply do not exist. In a time when people rarely traveled far from their homes and when photography barely existed, they relied on books like this to understand the world, and most of the things from his book were legends, rumors, and stories. Among stories of medicinal uses for Egyptian mummies and strange ideas about the mating habits of butterflies, Homé included images of whales, each of which showed them with creepy faces and antenna protruding from their heads. No wonder people in the 18th century believed in sea monsters when they were told creatures like this actually existed. Number 9. Powerful Pelicans if you've ever been by the ocean and seen a pelican comedically getting on with its day, then you'll understand quite how far from the truth what 7th century monks thought of the birds. To them, pelicans represented the ultimate sacrifice of Christ. They distinguished between two types of pelicans, those that lived on the Nile in Egypt and ate fish, and those that lived on islands and ate lizards and crocodiles, the latter of which is why they became associated with Christian symbology. These lizards and crocodiles were seen as representations of the devil, and therefore the pelican helps purify the world from sin. This led to a story being told about pelicans. It says that a mother pelican gave birth to a brood of chicks. She fed them continuously, but as they grew, they became violent and tried to peck her eyes out. In a moment of anger, she retaliated and struck the young birds to death. After sitting on the nest for three days, she felt bad, so she pierced the side of her body with her beak. As she died and her blood dripped on the chicks, they came back to life once again. The similarities between this story and the resurrection of Christ are clear, but this didn't stop many people from believing that pelicans actually behave like this and that their blood was magical. Number 8. Elephants Fight Dragons Elephants have long been a source of mystery for different civilizations, and their skulls are even thought to have been the inspiration behind the idea of the Cyclops in Greek mythology. But one thing about the animals that are mentioned time and time again is their apparent hatred of dragons. Medieval images of elephants often show them in battle with the fiery beasts, with written records from as far back as the 13th century. One text written by a Franciscan monk who lived in England said that between elephants and dragons is everlasting fighting, for the dragon with his tail binds and spans the elephant, and the elephant with his foot and with his nose throws down the dragon, and the dragon binds and spans the elephant's legs and makes him fall, but the dragon takes it full sore, for while he slays the elephant, the elephant falls upon him and slays him too. It's a rough battle all around. This too seems to have biblical roots, where the dragon is seen as being the greatest of all serpents, while the elephants represent Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. People during the Middle Ages believed elephants to be continually battling dragons, and as they would never have the chance to see one in the wild, why would they think any different? Number 7. The Herds and the Bees I'm hoping that someone has explained the birds and the bees to you at some point, but where do you think bees come from? After observation and research into their behaviors, we now know exactly how they are born, from the queen and the hive. But this knowledge wasn't prevalent to the Romans, as was seen in a book called Georgics that was written by Virgil in 29 BC. In it, he explains where bees come from, and it's rather surprising considering what we know today. He says that swarms of bees emerge from the bloated stomachs of dead oxen, one that hadn't shed any blood during its death. Perhaps stranger is that this was quite a wide-held belief, and across the Mediterranean there was a ritual based upon this idea, known as bugonia. This process involved locking two oxen into a specially designed shed and then bludgeoning them to death. The bodies would be left in there for three weeks before being aired out. Then, 11 days after that, there would be a swarm of bees that emerged. Quite how they got this idea or how often it was performed is not entirely clear, but there are accounts of similar practices dating back to the ancient Egyptians, so it seems quite a large number of oxen have suffered this fate in the name of creating bees. And now for number 6, 
But first, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Glad to see you again. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and join us. We have lots of new videos coming up. Number six, the praying mantis. When you think of a praying mantis, one fact will probably come to mind, the way that the females bite off the heads of the males after mating. Sorry to tell you the bad news, but this is actually a myth and in no way represents what truly happens in nature. The notion originally came from the observation of mantis behavior in captivity, where the animals were fed very little and not well cared for. It's now thought that this vicious behavior was more of a stress and desperation response than what the creatures normally do. An experiment in 1987 finally put an end to the debate by observing the mating rituals of 69 pairs of praying mantises. They found an incredibly complex display that in some cases lasted for up to 10 days, and there was no sign that cannibalism is associated with sexual behavior. It is, however, present in times of hunger, and is most likely a way to ensure there will be enough resources to go around for the mother and her children. Of the 69 experiments that were conducted, only one resulted in the untimely demise of the male. All the others went on to try their luck again. Risky, yes, but more often than not, turns out the male will be fine. Number five, where do eels come from? Love them or hate them, or even eat jellied versions of them like some people in England do, eels are definitely one of the stranger creatures that live in the world's oceans and rivers. Even weirder though, are beliefs on where they come from. Aristotle, for example, believed that they were the final form of earthworms, growing from the small creatures you find in the garden to river-dwelling beasts, while others have suggested that they spontaneously generate from mud, perhaps even what happens when parts of the riverbed become sentient. That's ridiculous though, right? Well, there's actually a good reason why people over the centuries have suggested such unusual ways for eels to exist, and that's because still to this day, it's not known for sure. All that is known is that when reaching sexual maturity, they seem to make their way to the Sargasso Sea, a region to the east of Bermuda, where they wriggle and writhe together. Larvae are then born and then return to their respective continents around the world where they grow. This event has never been witnessed, so there's a lot that we don't know about at all, which means that while it may seem ridiculous to suggest that they come from earthworms, for all we know, something even weirder could be happening. Number four, tapeworms as a weight loss technique. In medieval times, it was quite common for humans to be host to a number of worms because of the types of food that they would eat and the unclean water that they drank. But nowadays, in more developed countries at least, it's very rare indeed. This doesn't mean that certain types of worms are still around though, and one in particular, the tapeworm, has a potentially damaging idea still associated with it, that of weight loss. But before you go and purposefully ingest one, exactly how effective are tapeworms at helping you lose weight? The answer is not that effective, despite a number of people in the 20th century having tried it. The idea is that a tapeworm will eat a portion of your intake, meaning that it's not absorbed into your own body. But in practice, this doesn't necessarily work. Instead, tapeworms suck up the nutrients they need, which are quite often the same vitamins and minerals that you need and can become rather harmful if left to stay. Side effects can include headaches, weakness, pains, bloating, and even death, all in the name of minimal weight loss. Then, worst of all, at some point you need to get it out of your body, something that's probably one of the worst things you could wish upon anyone. Number three, dogs are colorblind. One animal myth that has been around for a long time and is still believed today is that dogs can only see in black and white. While it's true that they see in different ways than we do, they are definitely able to see some colors too. It all depends on the structure of the eye. You may remember from biology class that human eyes have three different kinds of light receiving cones. Each type relates to a different wavelength of light and therefore color. Colorblind people typically have a fault with one type of cone, which eliminates the associated colors from their vision and therefore means they struggle to make out those colors. Dogs' eyes have two cones too, so their sight is similar. They see the world in yellows, blues, and grays. They cannot see red though, it appears gray and black to them, which explains why they never respond well to red objects. Conversely, some types of shrimp have as many as 16 different types of cones in their eyes, which makes you wonder what they can see in the world that's invisible to us. Number two, worshiping a dung beetle. Cultures throughout history have idolized various different animals, but why would anyone choose a dung beetle for such an honor? Well, that's what the Egyptians did with the scarab beetles because of their belief that the critters had celestial powers. Scarabs spend their lives rolling balls of turd and eventually make it disappear. 
This to the Egyptians was similar to the way that the sun rises in the morning and falls at night. Their solar god Kepri had the face of a scarab and was believed to be responsible for rolling the sun across the heavens. Despite the Egyptians' misplaced associations with the beetles and celestial movements, dung beetles do have a link with heavenly bodies. They use the sun and the moon to help navigate and can often be seen climbing to the top of their dung balls to look to the sky and orient themselves. Maybe the Egyptians had seen this behavior and thought it was the beetle praying to the heavens. Number 1. Salamanders are fireproof Aristotle was responsible for making many unfounded claims that people went on to believe for hundreds of years after his death, but maybe none were as ridiculous and unfortunate for the animal. He wrote that salamanders were fireproof. As the stories continued, this belief became that they were actually born in fire and that their fur could be used to weave fire-resistant materials. And yes, I know that salamanders don't have fur. This seems to have come from the idea that asbestos was actually the wool of a salamander and used in royal garments to protect those in power from being burned. The name salamander comes from Persian and means fire within. And despite the obvious experiments being conducted that proved they weren't fireproof, the myth took hold. Hundreds of years later, they were thought to be able to kill multiple animals at once by poisoning entire trees of fruit, and even being blamed for killing 4,000 soldiers and 2,000 horses of Alexander the Great's army, simply by swimming into their drinking water. It's thought that the European fire salamander, with its wild colorings, is responsible for the myths. It is most certainly poisonous and can shoot neurotoxins at threats, but this would only cause a mild skin irritation to humans and it is certainly not able to kill entire armies. Furthermore, the salamander's natural moistness and mucus production probably means that they can survive hot environments longer than most, but they definitely can't last for very long. Please leave the poor salamanders alone. Thanks for watching. Which one of these surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.